Uh, this is Paul Jones with uh, Bootleggers Music Group Radio on uh, Race Road, right in between the Pluck and Chicken Place, Ron's Roost, and uh, the Closed Steak and Shake. And uh, I am coming to you live right now with Igor, and he has made this easy for me, Igor K., personal trainer from Toronto, Canada. Good morning. How are you, my friend? Good thing. How are you, Paul? I am, I am awesome, man. I am awesome. I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am uh, to actually be talking to you. I uh, did a real short, uh, uh, brief intro here this morning. You know, now's the time that everybody starts really kind of thinking about uh, getting out. You know that as a personal trainer, your business probably just spikes uh, right around the holidays. And you always have those you always have those early burners uh, right before New Year's and say, well, I'm not going to make a New Year's resolution. I'm going to do it right now. Is that about? Is that yeah, about yeah, it? yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, generally speaking, it's quiet in December, and then it really spikes in January. Okay, all right. And uh, and I got. I'm going to ask you a, uh, just a couple of real fast questions before we jump in here. But uh, just out of curiosity, what is the what's the what's the stick ratio on uh, on people that do that? What you know that stick through it? When do they when do they start dropping back off and back into the milkshakes and stuff like that? Well, the, the stick ratio with personal training is way higher with, than just gym memberships. Okay. Uh, with gym memberships, it's very, very low. Uh, it's something like 85% drop off. Okay. Um, with personal training, it's close to it's close to 100% stick rate. Okay. All right. All right. And I would imagine what what's the contributing factor to that? The fact that they they actually have to they actually have to commit. They're committing up by seeking a personal trainer as opposed to just going themselves. Yeah, exactly. That, that's exactly it. It's accountability. If you go by yourself, uh, nobody's expecting you at the gym. Nobody's going to uh, say, why didn't you come? Whereas with personal training, you have a, a commitment to another person. Okay. Uh, if you don't show up, that person's going to ask you, are you okay? Is everything all right? And if you felt like letting yourself off the hook, they'll often charge you for it. Um, okay. So because of that, accountability is, is, is very good. And the sick rate is really high. Yeah, yeah. So, and and again, I guess that's really why, like, over the years of me going to the gyms over the year and you join, it used to be back in the day, you go and join a gym and then you're just, uh, oh my God, inundated by the personal trainers trying to get you to sign up. Well, actually, where where maybe it was the sales pitch that was too harsh, it was actually a great idea because they knew you got a better chance yeah. of sticking with it, right? Yeah, but it, it, of course, it, 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 that's exactly it. It has to be palatable. Um, in other words, per, does personal training work for accountability? Yes. Now, is every personal trainer good? No, most the vast majority of personal trainers are not very good trainers. Um, but what it works great for is accountability. However, mm -hmm. if you're going to pressure somebody to, to join you and sign up for personal training, that that's not very good either. Right, right, right. Now, do you uh, do you do, do you pre qualify? How do you pre qualify? I would imagine you'd have to. Do some sort of pre-qualification before you actually uh, take on a client, correct? Because otherwise, you're wasting your time. Yeah, correct. So when, when somebody applies to be a personal training client, uh, what we'll do is first we'll chat on the phone for 10 or 15 minutes, and I try to figure out what are they trying to do, what have they done in the past, and so on. If I think that it's something that either I or my team can help with, then I say, okay, next step is let's move on to an initial assessment, uh, which is complimentary, and that gives us somewhere between 45 and 60 minutes to kind of feel each other out. Okay. If we, A, think we can still help them, and B, we like them as a person, um, then we'll take them on. That's, Whereas pretty, that's important, they, right? They, well, absolutely. Um, I mean, we, we've worked with probably about 900 clients over the last uh, 12, 13 years or so. Uh, the number of times we've had to decline a client based on personality alone is not very much, fortunately. Most most people we work with, we actually like as people. Okay. Um, on occasion, we've had to deny clients based on personality. Now, we didn't tell them that's the reason. We didn't tell them <laughs> you have a personality. So you are fun. a loser. <laughs> yeah, we don't like you, so we're not going to take you on. We never say that. Uh, only I, we have I, 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 ways of declining. I am very guilty of actually saying that to customers uh, when when uh, with my uh, call center. Uh, it, it's almost a prerequisite. If I if I don't get along with them, I don't like them or they don't like me. There's no sense in me doing business, and I'll tell them I just you know something ain't right here. And uh, and yeah, I've yeah. had five customers look at me because I'm I'm pretty goofy, and they'll go you know yeah. you're you're a little whacked out, so that's fine. But yeah, I get that. <laughs> I get that. That's uh that's it's important. I you know the gym that uh, 
that I had gone to pre um, uh, whatever you want to call it. I, I have my own word for it, but pre Corona or whatever it was. Um, yeah. You know, they, it was funny to me. <laughs> I don't know uh, if, if I'm not. I don't want to get like uh, too deep into my personal feelings of the whole thing. But you know, they kept McDonald's open. They kept all these places open. They kept the fast food open. They closed the freaking gym. Yeah, a little ironic, isn't it? I, you know, my brother-in-law and I were going to the gym literally six days, basically six days a week. We'd get up at 4.30 in the morning. We'd meet at 4.45. Yeah. We did that for years. I mean, years. And then all of a sudden, it was taken away. But I could go get a, you know, I could go get a cheeseburger and a shake. But I couldn't yeah. go I couldn't go to the gym. And the, the great irony is that by, according to government statistics, something like 1% of COVID cases came from gyms, whereas, right. I don't know I don't know how it is worldwide, but at least in, in Toronto, in, in, in Ontario, uh, something like 35% of cases happen in long-term care, um, a bunch of cases happen in schools, a bunch right. of cases happen in factories, so that accounts for like 85, 90% of cases. 1% right. happened in gyms, and so let's close that. <laughs> yeah, let's close it. I, again, I don't want to stick too much on that. I know... Uh... Uh, the people that uh, have listened to me talk and, and things like that in the past, they know where I'm at. I, I just couldn't even believe it, man. I, the, the, one thing, the one thing that I will say, how did that – I do want to ask you this. What did that do to you, man, that up there? I mean, in Canada, like down here, it put these dudes out of business, man. I mean, it, it, it devastated yet another industry. Yeah, um, something like 40% of the restaurants in Toronto closed down, and I, I don't know the, the statistics on gyms, but listen, I'm in the fitness industry, I know of, of I, I, fortunately, I don't own a gym, uh, but I, I've heard of a lot of my colleagues shutting their gyms down, yeah. um, but I think within the fitness industry, there's different categories, so and different categories were affected differently, yeah. like the hardest hit were group fitness classes, Right, right. because uh, you're breathing hard, you're in close proximity, etc., the right. next hardest hit was just regular gym memberships. Yeah. And the least hard hit was actually one-on-one -on -one personal training. Yeah. Um, because it is one-on-one, -on -one, it's easy to social distance, you could do it outdoors. Yeah. Um, so because of that, uh, personal training wasn't hit as hard. Um, yeah. Now, most personal trainers were still hit. Um, no, not, not, not in my case in particular. Uh, we were hit initially, but we finished with 68% uh, better than before the pandemic. Okay, um, good, good, good. Just to change your, change your marketing strategy. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so not all of the fitness industry was affected unanimously. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good, man. I just I, I know of uh, you know so many so many people down here that were just uh, totally devastated, you know, in their businesses and and whatnot, and uh, uh, the recovery, you know, still going on. So Toronto, um, uh, the Toronto Fitness Online dot com is Igor's. I'm speaking with Igor K. Igor K. And. Uh, uh, he's a uh, personal trainer, uh, one of the uh, top five in, in Toronto. Uh, you have uh, written multiple, multiple books. Uh, and uh, I think we're going to discuss, we can discuss anything you want. We can talk about anything you want to do. Um, I just thought it would be a great idea when we had our initial uh, phone call. You're a cool dude. Uh, you, you seem really energetic and uh uh, and I'll be uh, honest with you, you don't seem like you're full of crap, uh, like so many personal trainers uh, that I have met. They they want to spew a bunch of crap. You, you're you actually uh, telling people the truth, it sounds like, and especially in your book. We're talking about his book, Stop Exercising the Way You're Doing It Now. Tell me a little bit about about that. How What what uh, what brought that up? How, how long has that been out, by the way? How long has that been out? Uh, Stop Exercising with Dave Mao has been out for um, about nine years now. Uh, okay. sorry, I, I wrote it nine years, but it was published in 2014, so, it, so eight years. Yeah. Um, and it talks about, well, basically the most common things that clients come to me for. Um, exercise, nutrition, supplementation, accountability, motivation, and posture. Uh, there's, there are tons of misconceptions about all of the above. Um, and the thing is, there's no one truth. What's right for one person may be different for somebody else. And so what's when somebody asks me what's a good exercise program, I say, for who? For what goals? For what right. injuries? For what hormonal status? Um, and so on. Um, because of that, you, you have to take a non-dogmatic approach. You can't say, this, this is the way. This is the only way. And if you don't follow this way, you're doing it wrong, or you're not going to get results, or you're going to get injured. Um, not the case. There is, you know... Every program, exercise and nutrition, works for some people some of the time, 
but no program works for all people all the time. Right. Uh, because of that, that's kind of what that book goes into, how to individualize your own exercise and nutrition and supplementation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think people over, I think people overlook that. It's kind of like when when I would be at the gym, I would watch people <clears throat> bring uh, maybe a friend in or uh, a spouse in or something, and uh, you could see these. Uh, and I always like the real big burly dudes that you know come in, and uh, you know they're you got to do it this way, you got to do it. Well, hell, that you know that person's not going to be able to do it that way. You know, number one. And then they yeah. get discouraged, right? And that's when yeah, people people quit anything as soon as they get discouraged. Bingo. And one of the most discouraging things is not seeing results. I can't tell you how many how many people say what I ask them, what's your biggest issue with, with weight loss? They'll say motivation. And I ask to, to elaborate on that. They say, Well, I'm not really sure if what I'm doing is working. So it's really the absence of certainty whether you're getting results or not. So that's why with most of my clients, I like to measure them um, every two weeks to see are they getting results. Because if you wait for results to be visible to the eyes, you'll be waiting a very long time, you know, one, two, three months. Um, and that's too long to, 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 to know if you're, if you're seeing results or not. Now, if you right. know in two weeks, using tools that are more sensitive than the eyes, uh, then, you're, it, then you'll be motivated to do something either way. Let's say you're getting the results that you, that you want to get. Awesome. You'll be mo- motivated to keep doing what you're doing. But let's say you're not getting the results that you want. Well, you'll still be motivated to change what you're doing. Okay. But in either case, you're motivated. The biggest, the biggest motivation killer is just not knowing. Mm-hmm. Even not getting results is motivating because you have something to do differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just not knowing is the biggest problem. I think one of the one of the things that you said to me that kind of stands out is you actually asked the questions. You know, like what is it that somebody's trying to achieve? It's not always going to be uh you know maybe weight loss per se it may be fitting in their clothes differently which means that's that's fat loss right that's yeah. that's going to be more or less like fat loss it's not necessarily weight loss because the weight's actually going to go up <laughs> yeah, it's saying, yeah. yeah and, that's what and, they call the recomposition recomposition means your weight stays the same but the composition of that weight is different. Maybe there's less fat and more muscle, and so you lost five pounds of fat and gained five pounds of muscle, and then your 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 weight is the same. Right. Like right. And by, it sounds like to me you're pointing those things out because so so often I think uh, I know during my you know there's been times in my life where I've ballooned up. I basically am about 100 and uh, yeah I stay fluctuate between 175 and 180 pounds, and I was at 247. And uh, so I was like a large, but it's like, does this dress make my butt look fat? No, your big butt makes your butt look fat. <laughs> it's not, don't blame the dress, right? But um, uh, what's really hard is when you're trying to lose that. I was trying to lose the fat, not only the fat, uh, right. but I needed to reportion everything. And it would take so long to get back in those, you know, that next size down pants or something. And, uh, you know, if you didn't have somebody that, like, I understood what was happening to my body. I understood that the muscle mass was growing. And so, therefore, don't even bother with the damn scale. uh, Because that's just going to discourage the heck out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a time and a place for the scale. But if you understand what's going on, if you're you're deliberately trying to gain muscle, the scale doesn't tell you the full story. Uh, Now, if if you're losing weight without strength training, which I have to ask, why are you losing weight without strength training? Um, then the scale is an okay tool. The, but yeah. again, the same problem exists. Um, you want to lose, most people want to lose fat. Nobody would be very happy to lose muscle or bone mass. And mm-hmm. yet, if you're losing weight, even without strength training, as much as 45% of the weight you're losing is muscle. Right. Um, and a tiny bit of bone. Uh, so if you're down 10 pounds, you're down four and a half pounds of muscle and maybe six and a half pounds of, of, of sorry, five and a half pounds of fat. Um, so the scale um, has its time and place, but in terms of body composition, um, it's it's not it's not the greatest tool. I, I use it in other ways to to assess things like bloating and so on, um, daily fluctuations in water weight, uh, but not so much body composition. Now, does uh, I want to um, again for anybody just joining in? I see there's a bunch of people hopping on. We we sent out the email to the people and. You know, I think this is a great topic, like I said, you know, especially this time of year. Uh, I'm talking to Igor out of uh, Toronto, Canada. He's a personal trainer. 
Um, do you consider yourself a, 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 a expert? I would, I, I'd like to think so. Um, okay. I published nine books. Uh, okay. I've been uh, personal training for 16 years. I'd like you to don't, think so that's I asked you that because you don't use the word. You're very humble. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't like to use the word, but if somebody yeah. some, somebody else uses the word, I won't I won't I won't correct them on it. Okay. Well, I consider you an expert. I, I just I, I kind of made that note that, uh, you know, a lot of times people come in with their ego. You just don't. When we talked on the phone the other day, you're just a, a really cool dude. I want to touch base on uh, a couple things. So it, I know you um, are you from originally Russia? Kind of uh, Soviet Union, but that part today is Kazakhstan. Okay. Uh, then I moved to Israel when I was three, and then I moved to Canada when I was ten. Okay, great. Okay, all right. Um, because I know you're of Russian descent, right? Uh, yeah. More or less. Okay, great. And um, um, so, what brought you to this uh, business? What brought you to this passion, this mission, this thing you're doing? It's actually kind of funny because when I was in high school, my parents wanted me to be a computer programmer. Right. Uh, no. People who know me, they laugh about that very hard because they know that I have very, A, very little interest in technology and B, very low aptitude for technology. So for me to sit in front of a computer for eight hours for four years is just uh, just asinine. Okay. Um, but all throughout high school, even elementary school a little bit, um, I was very interested in martial arts. In high school, I started competing in martial arts. Um, now, I don't have a great body for martial arts. I'm short and muscular. Mm -hmm. uh, for martial arts, you need to be tall and lanky. Mm -hmm. um long reach and not a lot of muscle mass um that's beneficial for martial arts uh but i was very competitive and i was very analytical so i wanted to figure out how do i get above average results with below average genetics um and so i i, I started to research how to improve my strength my endurance my speed all these kinds of things um that came naturally to a few other fighters uh but not naturally to me so i started doing better and better and better in competitions when my friends were out partying, I was reading books about um, athletic performance enhancement. Um, and I, I, I saw maybe this is not just a personal interest. Maybe this is a professional interest, too. Uh, so I so I started studying kinesiology in university. And then it took off from there. OK, great. So now you 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 throw a bunch of stuff in your training, right? The uh, you know, I, I you know, like. Uh, is stress making your pants tight? Yes. Um, you know, you you talk about even. Um, am I going to use the word more holistic approach to the whole package that you're offering to your clientele? Yeah. Uh, now the word yeah I, I, holistic is a good word. It's just been somewhat bastardized by right, right, by right. Me, to me to mean unscientific, woo-woo, fluffy stuff that's based on feelings instead of science. The, the word holistic actually means integrative. So you're integrating different aspects of science, but it doesn't mean anti-science. So yes, right. I would use the word holistic in the proper uh, sense of the word. Well, and you're attacking certain things too. Not only is somebody coming to you asking for help on possibly, you know, I would imagine most people are coming saying, uh, they want to come to the gym to better their appearance or lose weight or gain muscle mass or whatever, but you're also attacking, you know, emotional, mental health issues, uh, yeah. stress, things like that. Now, how, how do you, how do you qualify somebody on that? How are you like, if I came to you and, uh, wasn't going to openly say, because maybe I think I'm just going to go to gyms because I want to be able to sleep better. Uh, right. something of that nature, how how do you pull it out of somebody or how do you recognize that you can help somebody with that is maybe suffering from depression? Because, you know, that's a hot topic for me. Uh, yep. I've done suicide prevention uh, for 20 plus years, you know, how and I have told people in that world, in the mental health world, you know, especially people that are uh, uh, suffering from clinical depression, uh, uh, and there is a difference, you know, mental illness and mental health. So mental illness is a clinical depression. And I've told him it, yeah, it is important. You have to get to the gym. You have to get sleep. Most people don't even know what the hell that means, uh, to yeah. your body. So talk to yeah. me a little bit about that. Totally. So whenever somebody comes in for, for an assessment, uh, or even before that, I always want to know what's your goal and then why is that important to you? So maybe somebody will say, I want to lose weight. Now, a lot of personal trainers will stop there, like, hey, good enough. I got, I, I know, I know what to do. 
and but but uh, in my case, I want to know well, why do you want to lose weight? And then I hear what's really behind that. It do, for some people, it's really that that's it. That they just want to lose weight. They want to look better. They want to uh, fit into into better clothes. They want to uh, appear more attractive, etc. For a lot of people, in my case, because I work with a fifty plus population, it's more than just about aesthetics. Yes, they want to look better. No question about that. But they also want better cholesterol levels. They want uh, better mental health, um, anxiety, depression reduction. Uh, they want better blood sugar control, lower blood pressure. Um, they want to increase their, their, their bone strength to prevent osteoporosis or to, or to reverse osteoporosis. Uh, so I really want to know not just what's the surface level thing, but let's peel back a layer of the onion and figure out why do you want that? What's the deeper, what's the deeper reason? So, you know, again, um, uh, talking with you, I hope the people that are listening understand. So this year when you're sitting around and you got your belt unbuckled and crap like that and, and you're uh, making your uh, revolution or whatever you're, you want to call it, uh, you know, reaching out to someone like Igor and, and, and so I'm going to do a little commercial real fast here. They can, you can take clients from the United States, right? I mean, I mean, we're doing, I'm sitting here actually, uh, so, you know, I'm recording this uh, for uh, later play, but I'm also recording the video of Igor because he's cute as hell. He's just like a little puppy dog over there. Uh, but uh, um, you can take customers and clientele from here because of, you know, techno. one good thing that came out of uh, whatever you want to call it is kind of technology that there are certain things that we can do. We still, I believe in human connection. You, we, you, we're human beings. We have to be, and I'm sure you've seen an increase in depression uh, in your own country, as we have here, and suicide rates are off the chart because we lost that human connection. But this technology gives us the opportunity to connect. I mean, normally I would be doing this on the phone with you or not at all. Uh, yep. So you can, but I got a buddy that uh, one of the things that happens when we're uh, doing the, the radio shows is I people will text me, uh, people will text the phone. My, anybody can at any time text me. Um, uh, that knows me or they can go through the website and ask questions but my buddy Gary Smith said what's the best way is asking what's the best way to gain muscle as you get older in your 70s and 80s and Gary I didn't I didn't know you were actually that old and I don't I shouldn't be hanging around people like you you're too old <laughs> <laughs> but what what would be because that's him a client asking you that's what his goal would be you said 50 plus uh, what would be what would be the best way for him to gain muscle as he gets older? Uh, by and large, gaining muscle when you're younger is very very similar to gaining muscle when you're older, but there are a couple of minor differences. Um, let, let me talk about the similarities first. The similar the sim similarities between gaining muscle at any age for any sex is one strength training, no ifs ands or buts about it, and two adequate protein, three sleep. Um, if I was to go a little bit deeper, I'd also say hormonal balance, um, having the right ratios of testosterone to cortisol to estrogen, growth hormone, and so on. Um, so, but I'd say the big three are um, strength training, pr adequate protein, and sleep. Um, that's the same for anybody. Um, mm -hmm. Now, each one of those has a much deeper layer that we can go into. But the difference between gaining uh, muscle when you're younger versus when you're older is people who are uh, over 60 um, their absorption is not as good as people who are under 60. Because mm -hmm. of that, protein requirements for people over 60 are higher than protein requirements who, uh, for people who are under 60, by mm -hmm. as much as 30 to 50%. Um, but here's the great irony. Despite protein requirements being higher, their desire for protein is lower. Um, yeah. yeah, so that, that's one big irony. Yeah. Um, and one um, one. I wouldn't say major difference, but one minor difference between gaining muscle when you're younger versus gaining muscle when you're older. The other, uh, again, minor difference is people think that when you're older, you need to do less. It's actually the opposite. You need to do to you, you need more sets per muscle group to elicit muscle growth because there is such a thing called anabolic resistance. Uh, that means older people are less responsive to muscle building hormones. That's what that word anabolic means. So older people are less responsive to muscle building hormones. Therefore, they need to do more sets per muscle group uh, to elicit the same effects as somebody younger. They're, they're less responsive to it. Um, so there's the two differences between gaining muscle when you're older versus when you're younger, A, higher protein, and B, more sets per muscle group. So <laughs> you're you, so you're saying more sets per muscle group. I, I want to ask you, I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you two questions on that to follow up. 
so protein wise, what type of protein? Gary's actually he's he's uh, he's loving you, man. Uh, he he sends me lean protein question mark, uh, Cato question mark. What type? I I will tell you right now. I've been taking uh, protein for. Uh, years, years, let's just say years, 10, 10, 10 yeah. plus years. Um, yeah. At one point I was getting, when I was working out all the time, I was getting roughly uh, between 300 and 450 grams of protein a day through right. shakes, through, because I stopped, I actually stopped eating solid food other than yeah. about two or three times a week. I was living off of, and not for any other reason. I just didn't, I wasn't hungry. I mean, people are astonished. I can go days without eating and just live off the, my protein shakes and I'm, I've maintained right. that. Uh, but what, what type of protein, where, where were the, because you, you said it, they, the desire to have the meals that are going to give you that probably do go down, right. As you get older, yeah. I know it has for me. So how, where do they find this protein? Where, where would you recommend getting it from? What sources? Yeah, the, 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 fir the first and best source, of course, is, well, food. Right. Um, like, you know, chicken, beef, right. pork, right. Uh, tuna, salmon, and so on. Um, those are the best sources. Now, if somebody, um, you know, is eating protein to their satisfaction and it's still not enough, uh, then go for supplements. Um, I mean, the gold standard is whey protein. It's been used yeah, for... Yeah, that's you know, what I was... That's, yeah. 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 It's been I, used I, would, I, would my, I would put my fruit in the bullet every single morning and you know i'd have yeah. three of those a day and then i always had the the container ones that are 30 grams i use the uh, kirkland at that time well, i'm not going to say that i'm not advertising for them uh unless they yeah. pay me but uh you know I always would have that and just always stayed full you know yeah always yeah, exactly. yeah yeah so weight, weight protein is the gold standard um and the reason it's the gold standard for muscle building is because of what's called the amino acid profile. And what are amino acids? Amino acids are kind of like the building blocks of protein. I tell somebody that if protein is a necklace, then each bead in the necklace is an amino acid. And so there's one amino acid that's particularly important for muscle building, that's called leucine, L-E-U-C-I-N-E, -E, leucine. Um, and leucine is very, very high in whey protein. It's higher than in, in pea protein or rice protein, et cetera. Um, does that mean that pea and rice protein are not are, are not as good? If you're just going for um, total amount, maybe not. But if you're if, sorry, if you're going for just like gram for gram, no, it's not as good. But if your total amount of grams is the same between whey protein uh, food and uh, and pea or rice protein, uh, those those tend to be fine as well. Uh, lots of people don't really like the texture because whey blends really well, and pea and rice protein are kind of chalky. Um, but if you can get past the texture, even pea and rice protein are adequate as long as you don't do pea protein all the time or rice protein all the time. Maybe alternate one day pea protein, one day rice protein. Mm -hmm. um, so those those would be my my probably my four best sources of protein. Number one, food. <laughs> Number right. two, whey protein. Numbers three and four, uh, rice and pea protein. Right, right. Okay. Well, I hope uh, Gary. I hope that answered uh, answered uh, your questions for sure. So uh, I want to get back to the, um, I want to go uh, a little bit on, give me, talk to me a little bit about, uh, let's take somebody that's going through uh, situational uh, depression, because that's really what we're seeing right now in our world. Uh, sadly, people equate it all with mental illness, and then they'll, they'll take situational uh, depression run to the doctor, get a pill, medicate their healthy brain, and just screw all their crap up. Um, yeah. Because a doctor does not have a time, usually doesn't even have the ability to right. uh, ask the questions, right? I mean, uh, yeah. you know, when I, when our business, when, when we lost so much of our business through this, uh, you know, I've suffered from clinical depression and situational depression. You know, it, there's no sense in me going and getting a pill. I wasn't going to make my customers come back or fatten up my bank account. I was going to still be depressed. So now I got a, a chemical in my body. Um, let's talk. Let's talk about anybody that's going through now life depression, situational depression. For those of you listening, if you think that you know, if you're going through depression because of the separations or things that you may have lost during uh, 
uh, the scamdemic, oops, there I said that word, and uh, 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 a pill's not going to do it. What's going to yeah. do it is what you're about to tell us. I guarantee it. What's What will help people more is to listen to someone like you. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, um, so the one thing that that will help, um, and there there are there are for sure differences between situational uh, depression and just who you like as a trait. Um, the, but exercise is common to both of them. Um, exercise will often help relieve uh, depression, even if it's just temporary. Um, but in my in my book, the the mental health prescription, the one one question we'll ask is, well, so how temporary are the depression relieving effects of exercise? Um, and so there, there's actually research to, to explain this. Um, and there are differences between cardio and strength training. Strength training to, tends to have longer lasting effects um, to the tune of, of, of a few days. With cardio, in response to about 15, 20 minutes of cardio, you get about six hours of relief. Uh, now, longer durations give you, give you longer relief. So that's pretty cool. But we should also quantify what like, cardio is not all created equal. There is low intensity, there's moderate intensity, there's high intensity. Furthermore, there's different modes of cardio. You can go on the treadmill, you can go on the elliptical, you can go outside and go for a hike. You can get together with a friend and play squash or racquetball or tennis. Uh, so there's different forms of cardio. Um, while there's not enough research to distinguish between the different forms of cardio, there, are, there is substantial research to differentiate between different intensities of cardio. And it appears that for, um, for depression, high intensity is particularly helpful. Um, now, the interesting thing is that for anxiety, that's not the case. For anxiety, high, uh, high intensity exercise will make anxiety worse, but it makes depression better. Um, and so, and I know this question is coming, we can address that later. What if I have both anxiety and depression? Um, but we can talk Run about real that fast, then slow down. Run real fast, then slow down. <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. <laughs> Do a little bit of both. <laughs> but yeah, so, so high intensity um, at cardio is particularly helpful for depression. Now, people are asking, how high is high? High is anything over 85% of your maximal heart rate. And how do you figure out your maximal heart rate? Well, that's a very simple formula. That's 220 minus your age. So let's say one of our listeners here is 60 years old. Uh, so 220 minus 60 is 160. And you take 85% of 160, which I think is around 138 or so. So somebody who's 60 years old would have to exercise above 138 beats per minute um, to get the, um, the depression relieving effects of exercise. Now, will they get depression relieving effects of exercise at lower intensities? Sure. But here, the higher the intensity, the better. The, the greater the relief, the, the longer lasting the relief. Now, um, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, but, but, and, then, and then do you, because a, another very important component to this equation of exercise to help depression and or anxiety, but it, like we're talking about depression, and, um, is going to be the big one is going to be for me diet I, they can yeah. if, if they don't start getting rid of the sugar if they don't start getting rid of some of the crap all of they're sticking in their you know with a spoon uh they're just it's almost like to me it's like somebody taking uh, a diabetic taking insulin and still eating like crap uh you yeah. know what are you doing right i mean you might yeah. as well just yeah. save the money on the on the on the tab for the medicine and just keep doing what you're doing enjoy your nap and then i hope you not miss that foot too much yeah but, yeah uh, exactly yeah yeah nutrition plays a huge role uh when it comes to depression um as i talked about in my book there's an entire chapter on nutrition for depression uh one commonly misdiagnosed condition uh, it's misdiagnosed as depression is actually hypoglycemia which is low blood sugar um the so a lot of the symptoms of, of, of low blood sugar actually mask themselves as depression. And the real challenge with diagnosing low blood sugar is that unlike high blood sugar or diabetes, where there's an established cutoff and you go anywhere in the world and it's the same cutoff everywhere, uh, that's not the case with, uh, with low blood sugar. Uh, there are four po different possible criteria for low blood sugar, and there's no universal agreement on which one of the four is correct. And it could be that more than one of the four is correct. Um, so because of that, it's very, very hard to figure out, do you have low blood sugar? Um, but there are a few easy tests that I give in my book to, to figure it out. Now, let's hypothetically say somebody is does have low blood sugar. Uh, you would think, oh, if I eat sugar, that's going to raise my low blood sugar. Well, in the in the short term, yes. But in the long term, it's going to cause more, more blood sugar dips, um, which could actually exacerbate the, the, the depression. So you're absolutely right. right. Getting the sugar out of the diet is very, very beneficial. Right. Um, 
And that's one thing. The other thing is identifying food sensitivities. Now, a lot of people think uh, I don't have any allergies. Well, allergies are not the same as sensitivities. The difference is this. Allergies are severe and immediate. Sensitivities are subtle and delayed. For example, if you have an allergy to peanuts, you eat a peanut, and in a matter of seconds, your throat shuts. If you have an allergy to shellfish, you eat shellfish, and in a matter of a few minutes to two hours, you break out in hives. Those are examples of allergies. Now, sensitivities, again, are subtle and delayed. So, for instance, you eat, I'm just going to say this, gluten. Um, and, you know, two days later, you, you're, you're feeling mentally foggy. You're a little depressed. Um, you, 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 you drink dairy. You drink milk. And then a couple days later, your joints are stiff. Now, because it doesn't happen in a matter of seconds, minutes, or hours, it's hard to put two and two together. Uh, I'm not saying gluten and dairy are the cause of all evil in North America. Right, right, right. right. Um, uh, but what I am saying is that they are common food sensitivities. Uh, they're not universal, but they are common. Um, and identifying food sensitivities can go a very long way towards um, addressing not just depression, but many far-reaching things, including autoimmune disorders, um, including anxiety, including a lot of other psychiatric conditions. So on, on the nutrition side of things, there's also a lot that can be done. Wow, that is awesome, man. Yeah, it, it's so funny that, you know, I, I talk about this a lot with, uh, you know, friends and people, and we've talked about it on the show, it's that there's, there's so many simplistic, I guess simplistic might be the wrong word, but there are some very simplistic solutions to so many people's problems. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, have you ever have you ever watched that documentary, The Magic Pill? No, but I'll check it out. Look that up. I, I'm telling you, it it is it is about food, what we put in our bodies, and what has happened to us as a as a world. Really, now, I mean, as a, I mean, it used to be just you know Americans were fat and the Brits maybe. Uh, but now it's, it's like everywhere. And when I, when I had started back to the gym, I mean, I was, I was really relentless on my diet. I really paid attention to every, everything. And I came across the magic pill and it covers food. And, and in the very beginning of this documentary, it, it says a statement that has stuck with me forever. And I quote it all the time. The only thing, the only animals on the earth that are fat and disease infested are humans and those which we feed. Yeah, good point. Hey. Yeah, I mean, to a good extent, our um, in our modern world, our concept of how much food do we need is 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 way off, as evidenced by many of the uh, of the of the overweight bodies out there. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Uh, how hard it is for people to wrap their heads around that. What they're shoving down their throats is actually poisoning them or, you know, it's killing them. I, it's killing them. I mean, aspartame. I, I think, I don't think aspartame is allowed in any food in Canada. What, from what I know, it's we, the United States, are the only ones that allow aspartame in food still. And it's rat poison. You use it rationally. You use it rationally? No, no, Canada allows it. Okay, I it's rat poison. It, it's it's in diet sodas. It's in all this. We're, we we're ingesting, and then we wonder why everybody's filled up with cancer. All right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, I mean, a lot of the disease, modern day diseases are by and large lifestyle diseases. So yeah. um, yes, there are some cases of heart disease and cancer that are un unavoidable, but there's also a ton that are. Type yeah. two diabetes is largely preventable. I was just um, gonna. I wanted to bring that up. I just brought down that paragraph here. I just brought down, you know, uh, people that are suffering from really all. In my opinion, I think a great deal of diabetes, all of it, has something to do at some point in time with what was going in the body. Of course, it could be definitely sign. You know, the other. You know, definitely one hundred percent medical. But you know, the, the the money we're shelling out for people that if they just you know. Should. Hopefully, they keep those masks on and stop shoving the food down their throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And to, to that point, um, one of the biggest controversies within diabetes is what's the most important. And uh, the whole conversation the last 50 years since Atkins has been all about carbohydrates. And don't get me wrong, carbohydrates are important, but they're not the most important. They're actually the third most important. The first most important factor 
when it comes to diabetes reversal, type 2 diabetes reversal, is good old boring calories. Uh, it's in, and I, I talk about this in my book on, um, on type 2 diabetes, uh, that if in, in studies where people, where, where the caloric intake of diabetics was normalized, even if they were eating a, a high, a high percent of those calories were carbs, even then they, a lot of them were able to reverse their diabetes, go off medications, go off insulin. Um, and just the caloric normalization, they, they could still be eating burgers, but they're eating 2000 calories per day of burgers, not 4,000. Right. Um, so caloric normalization, and I'm not going to say caloric restriction, because it's not restriction, it's eating the right amount of calories, not right. less than you need. Right. Caloric normalization um, is the biggest factor when it comes to type 2 diabetes reversal. The second biggest factor, which again, is still not carbohydrates, is actually fiber. Um, a lot of the research fails to distinguish between high fiber carbohydrates and low fiber carbohydrates. It's one thing to get your 65% your of carbs from pasta, potatoes, rice, bread, versus beans, peas, lentils, chickpeas, and so on. Um, those are high fiber sources of carbs. In, in studies done on high carbohydrate diets, where people still manage to lower their blood sugar, how could they possibly lower their blood sugar on a high carbohydrate diet? Because those high carbohydrate sources are also high in fiber. Um, and in a number of studies that I, that I uh, listed in my, in my book, um, just uh, you know, optimizing fiber intake lowers uh, HbA1c, the primary uh, marker of blood sugar, by mm -hmm. anywhere from 25 to 3%, which is giant. That, for a lot of people, that just normalizes their blood sugar. Right. And the fiber requirements of diabetics is higher than the fiber requirements of non-diabetics. Whereas non-diabetics might need somewhere around 14 to 17 um, grams of fiber per 1,000 calories, uh, diabetics need about uh, 20, grams of uh, 20 grams of fiber per 1,000 calories. So their, their requirements are just higher. Right, right. And is there a, you know, one thing that I have done for uh, years is uh, um, in, I'm going to say about 10 years ago, I was reading about, uh, well, you, you know, Napoleon Hill, if you know anything about Napoleon Hill, you know, he, he, um, he always referred to our digestive system as just a sewer system of just crap. Uh, literally, right? I mean, literally, just uh, it. People don't understand keeping that, keeping all that in their bodies and not purging that or not cleansing that. Uh, it yeah. was killing. Uh, it kills people. Depression and all kinds of uh, things can come of that. And so I started out doing the research on like colon cleansing and things like that, and and it really came down to just fiber. Get fiber. And so I just started taking a, a large, you know, uh, uh, three to six fiber pills in the morning, three to six fiber pills in the evening. And man, it changed. It changed a lot for me. I mean, I started yeah. feeling incredibly better. So like for people that uh, may be listening, you know, are, are those fiber type pills or a supplement a good way to increase their fiber? as well to, to help? Yeah, so th th they are an option. Um, my, my first Again, preference food is, is all, food, food is always the yeah. best option, We right? Yeah. I mean, uh, but there are so many people that really won't take, I don't take the time to eat. I'm not gonna get my fiber yeah. from, you know, food because it doesn't even interest me anymore. Food really doesn't interest yeah. me. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so food, food is number one, but there, are, I mean, I'm a big proponent of supplements and one of the reasons is compliance. Uh, to tell somebody who's 50, 60, 70 years old to change their diet, it's going to be very hard. Not to say you shouldn't do it, it's just going to be hard. Mm -hmm. uh, tell somebody to take a pill, very, very easy. Near 100% compliance. Yeah. Um, so because of that, yeah, if, if somebody is uh, lacking in fiber and they need to boost up their fiber, uh, yeah, fiber supplements work, work great. Um, but again, how much fiber do we need? Non-diabetics need between 24 and 38 grams of fiber per day. Diabetics type two need between thirty five and, and fifty grams per day. Wow, wow, <laughs> that's, that's 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 interesting. And I I wonder how many you know when you talk to people that uh, suffer from diabetes uh, or have diabetes. Uh, I don't really want to say suffer because you know like type two. Anytime it's self imposed, most most of the time it's self imposed. I have no pity for people, even myself. You know, I smoke twelve cigars a day, dude. If I get cancer, that's my problem, not anybody else's. I'm, don't feel right, sorry right. for me, right? But um, 
uh, it's amazing. Most people would probably not know these things. And again, uh, talking with Igor out of Toronto, Canada, as a personal trainer, man, you have you have enlightened me tremendously today. I mean, I know I, I don't want to burn up a bunch. Uh, you know, you, you were so kind to agree to come on for an hour. I want to have you uh, back. I, I would like to really be able to stay focused on a topic or maybe two or three. And I know I'm going to get more questions for you and I'm going to send them to your website. Um, so let me make sure I got it. Toronto fitness online.com. Um, my, uh, Toronto fitness online.com is actually my, my, my email, but the website is fitness solutions plus.ca. Oh, okay. Well, I've been going to, yeah, I've been, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Say that again on the, on the website and I'll make sure I got it posted. Right. So it's fitness solutions plus.ca. Okay, great. I, I, and then, uh, if you can, uh, send me over, uh, any more contact information for anybody. One thing I did, because uh, I, I want to stick with what I promised you, man, you know, what we talked about. I don't want to burn your day. Um, yeah, we can go off topic if you want. I'm happy to chat about anything fitness and nutrition well, related. I, I'm just digging what we're talking about right now. I know, um, so, you know, uh, sleep, eat, supplement, sleep, eat, su supplement. Uh, explain just a little bit uh about your philosophy there i i do like you know i like where you're talking about hormones are more important than calories um but i want to go to the you know stick in that sleep is so daggone important i know when i when i when i'm not sleeping right man my brain goes yeah. nuts i mean it just does totally. yeah yeah if somebody asks me what's what, what are the most important things for health, then I'll list them in this order. Number one is sleep. Um, number two is exercise. Number three is nutrition. And again, I'm an exercise guy. I make my living by selling exercise. And yet, even the exercise guy says sleep is more important than exercise. Right. Why is it? Because if you if you live to the age of ninety, you're supposed to spend about thirty years of those ninety asleep. And if your body thinks that it, that is that important, then it's, it's probably something you should devote your time and attention to and really, really prioritize if you're going to get as healthy as possible. The far reaching of, of, of effects of sleep are just incredible. Uh, for example, in my, in my diabetes book, I talk about how when you optimize your sleep, you, your body needs 30% less insulin to keep you at the regular blood, at good blood sugar levels. In my, in my mental health book, I'll talk about how if somebody has insomnia, the risks of anxiety and depression that are resistant to medications is much higher. In my, um, in my blood pressure book, I'll talk about how people who have sleep apnea are resistant to medications as well and wants to get treatment for their sleep, not for their blood pressure, but wants to get treatment for their sleep, their blood pressure goes down. Uh, so the, the effects of, of sleep are very, very far reaching. Uh, so that's why I put it in this order, sleep, exercise, nutrition. And then people say, well, I heard that nutrition is more important than exercise. That's just for weight loss, not for general health. If somebody's right. already at their ideal weight, I would put exercise above nutrition. No. Um, not to say nutrition is not important. It's still on my list. It's just below exercise. No. Um, and the more exercise, the more you exercise within limits, um, the more good you're going to do for your health. In other words, once a week is good. Six times per week is better. No. Um, it doesn't all have to be strength training. It doesn't all have to be cardio, but, it but it, it's, it's better to have a mix of everything. Maybe two days of strength training, two days of cardio, two days of stretching, um, or some ratio thereof. But that 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 would be my order: sleep, um, exercise, nutrition. Yeah, I, I just think it. I have had so many conversations about. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of friends that, my God, they got. You know, it seems like every time you get around, somebody's got something falling off their body. They're sick. They're, you know, I. We just went through another uh, round of uh, the flu. Uh, in our home, I I have escaped this thing for like three years, man. I I have escaped being sick, and I I, sw I swear it has everything to do with the amount of you know the proteins and the and the uh, supplements, the vitamin C, the vitamin D, the vi you know the the zinc. Yeah. The I, I swear because what I did, and I don't know how this will go with you. When everything started to go nutty, all I did was tripled my intake of everything. I tripled it. That's that's exactly what I I get three times the amount recommended of the C D zinc 
uh, things like that. I just do. And I made that decision myself. I'm like, well, heck, if I'll just do it. And man, I can't get, I'm going to knock on wood here. I, I have not gotten, I don't get sick. And I've been around sick ass people. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, if, if you're, if, if, if it's working for you, keep it going. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm sticking with the 12 cigars a day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, funny enough, the world's oldest person to ever live, um, she was a smoker for 100 years. And she quit smoking and died. at 117 and died at 122. And died. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I, everybody laughs at me. I'm, I'm like, you know, no sooner I do that, I get really sick and die. So I'm sticking yeah, with yeah. the plan. 58 years old, I'm, I'm cool, man. I'm cool. But uh, no, dude, I I appreciate you so so much. This has been real. This is a first day where I've, I've decided uh, we'll go on air live Mondays because um, we've done we do our shows normally. We'll just book it and do it. And somebody will come in the studio or whatnot. But in 2023, I really want because we've got a lot of people that listen. We're gaining momentum with our music. We're gaining momentum with the radio station. And I thought it would be a great idea. And you are the inaugural 9 a.m. live guest, and I cannot thank you. Uh, I want to stay definitely in touch. Um, I got uh, again. I'm keeping uh, keeping us to our keeping me to my word. I like to keep these in an hour anyway, but I know you're a busy man. And uh, is there any? Um, I want you to do a commercial for yourself, man. How? people need to understand they can they can do business with you and uh uh they can reach out and uh you know i'm i'm sure you've got your hourly advice rate and things of that nature or say uh, set them up on a program or answer some questions how how do uh tell them how to get in touch with you and and uh uh reach out to you Sure. Um, I'm not very good with social media, but my email is best. My email is Igor, I-G-O-R, at torontofitnessonline.com. So again, Igor, I-G-O-R, at torontofitnessonline.com. Um, and yeah, so we have a couple different services, either somebody, or well, products ra rather, if somebody wants to get some help with specific health condition, um, and they want to just, and they're a do-it-yourself type, then just grab one of my books. Right, um, right. Just type in my name, Igor, and then my last name is very hard, so don't worry about that. But just type in my name into Amazon, um, followed by the name of the condition. So if you want help with your diabetes, type in Igor Diabetes, Igor Mental Health, Igor High Blood Pressure, and so yeah, on. Yeah, I'm going to put – and I am going to put the links up on uh, the website as well. I'll put all those links up. Uh, I, too, we are not social media people. We uh, use Spotify, YouTube, and our yep. website. I'm, I don't believe in social media. I think uh, I'll, yeah, that's yeah, another conversation. Go. Uh, yeah. uh, and I really, and I, you and I talked, I, I don't believe in Amazon. I think they've ruined our world. Uh, I hear you. But, but if that's the only place we can get the book, then, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So, uh, yeah, I yeah. will, I will list, uh, the, the, uh, because I think the links to your books are on your website, correct? They're not on my website, but I can send those to you. Oh, okay, great. Um, uh, and I'll have all that, uh, put up there for you so any any last words that are all man we're uh we're closing in on uh closing in on our hour here that i, I promise you i want to keep it long. yeah no no i really appreciate uh i appreciate the, the interview great thoughtful questions i hope your your listeners your viewers found this beneficial um and if anybody has any questions that i didn't cover just feel free to email me at the email i mentioned earlier and i'll be happy to answer them yeah i've got a ton of questions i didn't even cover i went through your book and i, I you know we just it, I, there's just so much we could talk about. I'd like to have you on again sometime. Uh, you know, a, anytime, I, I, anytime that the, uh, anytime you're available, uh, I think it's an important uh, topic uh, because you know, again, our country, our world is filled with, um, and I'm not going to whack on the medical community, but I'm going to whack on the medical community. Uh, th their answer is to shove pills down people's throats. And that's not always the answer, and it's killing people, and it's costing a – actually, it's costing a fortune. It's just costing yeah, a fortune. Yeah. And what people don't understand is it's costing them a fortune because it's not solving their problem. It's yeah. – medication does not solve the problem. It hides the problem. It disguises yeah, yeah. It. It, it. It eases it. And then, you know, all you got to do is watch a medication – 
commercial and see you're going to take this to lower your blood pressure, but your pancreas is going to fall out, your liver is going to be on the ground, and you're going to start pissing blood. I, you know, I mean, the, the disclaimers are crazy. <laughs> the pill costs, <laughs> it causes, you know, you take a pill for your depression and then you have, you, you end up, you know, with um, your foot, foot falling off. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they definitely come with medications. Uh, there's benefits and drawbacks, but I do think uh, that uh, there are a lot of them are overprescribed before even attempting lifestyle uh, modifications. Yeah, there's. I mean, I'm not down. I'm not down. Medication saved my life when I was clinically depressed. It saved my life. But at the end of the day, it doesn't solve everything. And uh, you know, a, a guy like you, I think, I think today you've probably helped uh, quite a few people in realizing, you know. Instead of running out and getting a prescription or doing something stupid, you know, uh, first think about what you're shoving in your body and how you're treating your body, and, and things yeah. can go from there. So, yeah, Igor, man, I got to get a prescription. You can just run out. Yeah, dude, I appreciate you so much, and uh, I just uh, I can't thank you enough. And uh, I hope you have a great day and a great holiday up there, and uh, keep uh, keep the keep the northern border safe. <laughs> my pleasure thank you so much paul i love chatting about this stuff all right buddy i know you do i can tell and uh i'm gonna put this up on uh i'm gonna go ahead and put the because uh, i videoed it's videoed through the zoom meeting i'm gonna put it up on youtube i mean it's a new concept for me and uh put it up there but i'll send you all the links where everything's at if people want to so you have all the links of where uh everything can be seen then. sounds good and i'll share it as well all right buddy have a great day thanks paul you too all right man Bye -bye. god bless you thank you